The following are two dozen specific and detailed interrogatories I posed to President Dieter F. Uxdorf in my 2017 A Letter to an Apostle, which are discussed in the episodes that follow. In law, interrogatories are a formal set of written questions propounded by one individual or litigant and required to be answered by another in order to clarify matters of fact and help determine the truth. For each of my interrogatories, I presented what I considered to be the most pertinent evidence or where possible facts that make this an issue. I've also provided what the church, usually through her apologists, have provided by way of explanation or rebuttal. While there are many more questions that could be asked, I've settled on the following 24 as being the most significant. Interrogatory number one, why is there an absence of archaeological, anthropological, or other physical evidence supporting the Book of Mormon? Interrogatory number two, how do we reconcile the many anachronisms contained within the Book of Mormon? Interrogatory number three, why do recent DNA studies show that Native Americans are of Siberian Asiatic and not of Hebrew Middle Eastern origin? Interrogatory number four, why do we find so many examples of plagiarism and or reiteration of others' ideas in the Book of Mormon? Interrogatory number five, how do we deal with the substantive changes made to the Book of Mormon, the most correct book of any book on earth? Interrogatory number six, why were changes made retroactively to the Doctrine and Covenants? Interrogatory number seven, why is there such a scant mention of Jewish customs and traditions in the Book of Mormon. Interrogatory number eight. For proclaiming that the Book of Mormon contains the fullness of the gospel, why are so many essential elements missing from it? Interrogatory number nine. How do we overcome the conflicting statements made by the witnesses to the Book of Mormon? Interrogatory number ten. How do we deal with the many statements made by the witnesses that they viewed the Book of Mormon and witnessed the ministering of angels with their spiritual eyes or in vision only. Interrogatory number 11. How do we deal with the numerous accusations of sexual harassment and abuse leveled at Joseph Smith, including his affair with Fanny Elger prior to the revelation on plural marriage? Interrogatory number 12. Were Joseph's marriages to very young girls morally justifiable? Interrogatory number 13. Did Smith use coercion and undue influence to get girls and women to marry and or sleep with him? Interrogatory number 14. Was Joseph's polygamy and his polyandry and the lies and denials he told his followers and his wife justifiable? Interrogatory number 15. How do we deal with the contradictions relating to the restoration of the priesthood? Interrogatory number 16. How should we construe Joseph's gross mistranslation of the Egyptian papyri that formed the basis of the Book of Abraham? Interrogatory number 17. How do we square Joseph Smith's numerous false prophecies with the test of a true prophet as found in Deuteronomy 18? Interrogatory number 18. How can we deal with Smith's numerous differing first vision accounts and the fact that no one heard of the first vision for at least 12 to 22 years after he said it occurred? Interrogatory number 19. Was it coincidence that seven weeks after Joseph Smith's Masonic initiation, he introduced the endowment ceremony, essentially replicating the Masonic initiation? Interrogatory number 20. How does Smith's extensive rap sheet, including his arrest for money digging, treason, attempted murder, and bank fraud, comport with being a prophet of God? Interrogatory number 21. What is the meaning of Joseph Smith's embarrassing Kinderhook Plates episode? Interrogatory number 22. Was it true that Joseph offered to furnish his wife Emma with a substitute for him, specifically William Law, by way of compensation for his neglect offer on condition that she would forever stop her opposition to his polygamy? Interrogatory number 23. Does Smith's creation of the treasonous Council of Fifty and his crowning himself king of the world seem like the actions of a prophet of God? Interrogatory number 24. How do we deal with Joseph's ordering of the destruction of the Nabu expositor for unmasking his polygamy and accusing him of all manner of abominations practiced under the cloak of religion? 